Well, sometimes it's not always good what happens on farm. Unfortunately, these calves here are sick. Hopefully the ones in the paddock here are fine. I've put some in the shed, which we'll see a little bit later. And I was just disinfecting the sprayer. So today's Monday, I sort of had a lot of sick calves on Friday. I rung the vet and I was uh, Martha, speaking of Martha, and she was saying I need to disinfect the sprayer. I need to treat these calves as infected. The first 40 calves which are down on the farm, if you're new to my channel, I rear 80 calves annually for replacements for our dairy farm. So I do two lots of 40. The first 40 are fine. It's just this lot which I'm having trouble with. So I think they've picked a bug up from the shed over there. So we've got them out of the shed, put them in paddocks around, uh, around the cow shed here, which have got a lot of shelter. And anything that is sick, I've kept in the shed and we're feeding electrolytes at the moment. So I'm taking preventative measures against it, but what else can I do? So Emma's coming out soon. She's another vet from town. She's going to take blood samples and some of the newer calves down home, which we'll go and see in a minute. And we'll sort of talk to her because... The blood sampling's not going to nail what it is, but we might do some poo samples too to try and see if we can refine and um, see what the problem is. I'm suspecting maybe it's crypto, but we'll ask Emma about that and see what she thinks. Perfect timing, it just got down here. Looks like Emma's pulling in. Morning Emma. Morning. So everyone, this is Emma. G'day. And we are going to be doing some bloods and some poo samples today because we want to find out what's going on. And to try, well we're not being proactive because it's already happened but... It's sort of proactive. Sort of proactive. We want to, we, I want to know what it is so it doesn't happen again. So. Yep, so um, we'll, should we start with bloods and see yeah. how they go? Have you got yep. any three, four day old calves? Yes, yeah I do, yep. Cool. So, so the idea of the blood test will be to check if the plostrum's transferred to the calves? Yep. Yep. No, that's cool. I've got, yeah, there's probably three or four in here that'd be suitable for that. Awesome. And then we'll see if there's any sickies and we can take poo samples off them. Yep. Yep. And you just take it to the lab, eh? Or, or back to the yep. back so to town? And it, I can do it at the clinic, actually. So um, the poo samples, we've got an in-house test that we can run. Sweet. So I can give you an answer by the Savo. That'd be handy. And the bloods will send off to the lab and they'll probably be back by tomorrow morning. Oh um, yeah. And that'll let you know sort of how the cluster management's been going and stuff. And Sorted. If you need to get anything else done in that space. Cool. Um, so most of these are pretty new. So they've come in the last couple of days? Yeah, I, I'll go get my book eh, and we'll get the newest ones. Yep. What have we got? N, G, N, Z. So, do any of them? Do any of them? You have to keep Andrew. Are they all? Yep, the ones that um, the ones that come in that are like sunken. Um, I give colostrum. Yeah. But um, if they've noticeably have had a feed, I usually don't, and it usually works for me. So. Yeah. Um, but yeah, these these three. Uh, they yeah, they did a big drink off mum, so I didn't worry about them. Too rushed, poked your hand. Oh, that's all right. Worst things can happen. <laughs> This is on that one before. Alright, buddy. Well, that's good. a bit of blood, that's good. In. Is in. it another yep. Z? Last. Are you going to do three or do you want to do? Uh, we'll do four just in case that first one doesn't run. Alright. <laughs> Sweet. Just shot up to the cow shed because Emma is walking me through the bricks. What is it called? Bricks refractor? Refractometer, I think. Ref refractometer for measuring colostrum. Ooh. Flash, eh? Flash. 100 bucks. 100 bucks. Pretty so, cool, might invest in one of them. You pretty much just get if it was normal milk. Good jersey size. Yeah, it's yellow. Pretty uh, creamy. Just make sure it's stirred up. So you wouldn't want to test from just one quarter of the cow, you want to test from all of the quarters. Yep. Just put a drop on there and then look into the light. Yep. And look through there and take the reading. So can you see what that one is? Oh geez my eyes. Uh twelve. Twelve, yep. yeah. So for good colostrum you want it to be over twenty-two for that first feed. 
and for your jerseys you probably need about two litres of over 22 in the first 12 hours of life so if over the 22 far yeah away. if the cow calved last night it's sort of hard because you're missing that 12 hour window yeah makes sense yeah if the cow calves in the afternoon the best thing you could do is go and pick the calf up and get it some of that gold gloss from straight away yeah yeah it's a lot of faffing around to be picking up calves twice a day yeah um, oh well we do it anyway so yeah i like to do it yeah um, and then, yeah, the, it seems to be if a cow calves, the further away from when the cow calves, so when you test it, the more it seems to degrade in the udder. So yep. if a cow calved at night time and you didn't milk it till the next morning, it's probably going to have a lower reading on the bricks test than a cow yep. that had just calved. Yep, no, that makes sense, I suppose. And so, so, generally heifers are worse than like three, four year olds, that yep. sort of thing. But. Yeah, yeah. I've thought that too actually but <laughs> Some, well sometimes a heifer will give you only one litre or something yeah. and it'll be awesome because it's so, so such rich. a small yeah. volume and then a good old cow will come in and give you 20 litres or something and it'll be so diluted out um, it, it doesn't really work so yeah but it's pretty simple so we just put every cow that's just carved that day we just put them on a test bucket in our shed yep. and just go along with the bricks just get a sample out of the test bucket and as soon as we've got enough of the gold stuff over 22 for the yep. calves that have been born that day the rest just goes in the vet and we stop putting them on a test bucket and you um do you mix it like you can mix it. once you've tested and it's all good you can mix it yeah if you've got more than one cow yeah. over 22 yeah yeah yep. Sweet as. but sometimes you get some that'll be 30 and some that'll be 22 so you're better off using the 30 than the 22 yeah okay so you, the more you test the more picky you sort of get about yeah. it as well and now we're gonna go and have a look at the sick calves uh, the penis sick calves anyway, take some poo samples um, because I really want to know what it is. Do you think it could be crypto? Could be anything. Yeah, it could Rotavirus. be anything. Rotavirus, damn. <laughs> hopefully not. Hopefully, hopefully these will um, come back or we'll, we'll be able to find out what it is because I'd be really interested to know. Well this calf almost looks like it's going to poo now so that'll be... I bought this one in this morning, it wasn't looking too flash so... Perfect. Yuck. <laughs> Yucky, runny, very runny. So we've got the poo samples and the bloods. Emma's gonna go back, have a bit of lunch, and then test them later on. She'll get back to me. But in conclusion, it's not crypto. You don't think it's crypto? I don't think so. I'm not gonna yeah. put my money on it. No, so we're gonna tend towards the rotavirus, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't look sick enough. Didn't look sick <laughs> enough for crypto and rotavirus. It's sort of the symptoms, so. We'll see how we go. Yeah. And what does rotavirus do? It sort of just knocks them around heaps, eh? Yeah, it destroys their gut lining, so yep. they just through the eye of a needle. They do recover? Yeah, they do, yeah. Just puts them back a couple of weeks. Yeah. So, it'll be good. Hopefully it comes back with something. So, as I, as I said before, we know, but... Yeah. You can always vaccinate for rotavirus too, but we can't really do much prep though. Yeah, yeah, which would be... Well, that's something, so... <laughs> not, not that any of them are good, but... No, yeah. no, exactly. So now that we've done that, I need to mix up some electrolytes and go and feed these calves in the shed down there. And then there's a couple just um, down at home. I think there's two or three that I want to give or start giving some electrolytes to as well. This is the electrolytes I use. So it's pretty easy. They come with this cap. All you do is one cap per calf. And that gets mixed with two litres of water. Five, six, seven. And a quick stir. Dissolves pretty easy. So with this electrolytes, it's not a substitute for milk, a milk feed. It is just um, an added feed. So they still get their milk in the morning, then they'll get this at lunchtime, and then they'll get milk in the afternoon. So it's a lot of work uh, when you've got sick calves but it's worth it, I'd rather save them than them die and this is the only way to do it. Emma was saying you can't do much more than just feed them electrolytes, they will come right, it just takes time. Look, they know what that means. There you go.
so the reason they go on onto electrolytes is because that milk's just going straight through them uh, and they lack energy and this is just giving them a boost of energy during the day. You can't just give them electrolytes or you will kill them. Uh, they'll just dehydrate and die. They love this stuff. There's something about it. Maybe it's sweet, I'm not too sure. Or they're just, just thirsty. I didn't have a six teat for this one. But he's got a bit of, she's got a bit of fat on the ribs. So hopefully she's on the mend, whereas these ones are just, yeah, just bony. Oh, that one's not too bad. You were on the way up, I thought, little calf. Yeah, so not too bad. They've all finished, they've all had a feed. This is the sick one, and look, its tummy's big and full, so that's good. They've all had a good feed. It's a little calf, eh? And, yep, happy. So, I know some of you might be thinking, why are you putting videos up like this? Like, it's a bad look, it's a bad image. And realistically, it happens, unfortunately. So it's happened to me this year, I'm not proud of it. Um, but the thing I wanna do is just prevent it from happening again. So one of the things that I um, was being proactive about was getting bloods, um, getting poo samples. I was talking to Emma about how I can avoid it in the future and just show you that I'm doing everything I can to try and save these calves which we should see in the next couple of weeks. I'm pretty confident that they're gonna become or come back to normal, but it is gonna take a little bit longer than um, than expected or they're gonna be a little bit behind these others. It's pretty reassuring um, from ever to know that I was doing everything I can right. There's not much else I could have done to um, to get on track faster with them or anything. So that's quite reassuring. But yeah, unfortunately the reality is you sometimes you get diseases and viruses like this and yeah. Well, the results have come back. So Emma tested those poo samples on the day and they came back negative for the three things she tested for, which were crypto, rotavirus, and there's something else, but I can't quite remember what it was. Which is good, that's awesome, means there's no bugs in the shed. The only thing she couldn't test for, which was salmonella, she would have to get that sent away to a lab, but uh, we, well, I talked to her about it and she didn't think it was quite necessary to get it sent away, so uh, I didn't. It's good too, because these calves have definitely perked up in the last couple of days. I've put some that were sick inside, I've put them outside, now that we've got a little bit of fine weather. But at the end of the day, what's making them sick or what has made them sick? Well, I was talking to her about it and she thinks it's nutritional or definitely it could be nutritional and what she means by that is some of these calves hadn't had adequate colostrum their immune systems aren't quite as good as the others or the best that they can be they've drunk too much got the scours and it's just spread through them which i think is pretty plausible those blood samples that we took out of the four calves they just came back was it yesterday or the day before but three out of four of them had had adequate colostrum and one hadn't so it's definitely plausible that some of these aren't getting good enough colostrum and what can I do about that well I've bought that bricks tester that she showed me earlier on and next year I'm going to test for the good stuff I only use colostrum that's over 22 on the meter and probably probably tube everything so if it's had a drink off mum which I usually leave if I think that they've come in with good tubbies I don't feed them uh, straight away so I'll probably look to change that and everything will just get the good stuff uh, at the start to try and boost every or all the calves immune system. So it's probably going to be more work but hopefully uh, hopefully maybe less work because I won't be getting sick calves if that makes sense. So as well as Emma being a vet she also contract milks with her husband Chris. They farm not too far over there probably 5 or 10 minutes drive and she was talking to me about ad lib feeding because they do it they milk something like six to eight hundred cows all year uh, they have split carvings and they do mostly or they put a lot of beef across the cows so they rear most of their calves and they use ad lib feeding they like it they've had good results with it it's becoming quite popular here in new zealand i think quite a lot more people are doing it but what I mean by ad lib feeding, well ad lib feeding means calves uh, go in pens and they can drink as much as they want all day. It sounds weird but they sort of go up and drink littler amounts but more often through the day and people have had pretty good results with it I think so it's definitely something to uh, think about. You'd have to have a pretty good setup though, um, I couldn't do it in this shed, I could probably do it in the other shed 
you sort of have drums of or pens of they said they have 25 in there in their pens with a drum of about five teats on and you just fill the, te uh, the drum up a couple of times a day I think she also said we could go and have a look in video um, which would be quite interesting so that's something to think about but that'll pretty much do it I'm actually a lot happier because I've put some of those sicker calves in the shed well most of them they've gone back out on the paddock now that we've got some fine weather taking them off electrolytes because they perked up and were looking really good so they've gone back out but that'll pretty much do it, so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.